Hello friends, how are you doing? Um, I have a whole bunch of books to show you today and we are going to stick with one category and that is children's books. I just got done over the last couple of days listing a whole bunch of children's books on the website. I'm going to give you a link in the description for this video. So all of the books that you're going to see in this video, you can find on one page on the website with the link in the description. So these all came from a old building here in my town that a friend of mine told me about that was full of a family's um, old books. So I took them all home and sorted through them all and I have been slowly working my way through this giant, giant vintage and antique book haul. So today is a whole bunch of children's books and I'm excited to show them to you, but it's gonna take us a while. Okay, so settle in, maybe come back once or twice to watch this whole video. And we're gonna take a look at some of the vintage children's books that I got in this haul that I have now listed on the website. Enjoy. The first set I am going to show you is this darling set of three young adult um, novels by Rosamond du Jardin. And these are all about the same girl. Her name is Toby. So we start off with Practically 17. This is where she meets her first boyfriend. And then Class Ring is when they start to go steady. And then Boy Trouble is, I believe, the conclusion to this trilogy. So this estate had quite a few young adult novels like this and I just thought it was delightful. So they had a young girl in their family, obviously, who enjoyed these books and I listed these together. Okay, next I've got three Nancy Drew. So this one is the sign of the twisted candles and it's the most damaged. Um, but it is a first edition. I believe all three of these are first editions and I listed them together. This one, you see the page is loose here. But you can see that it's blue and it has Nancy right in the middle. Then we have the Haunted Bridge, which also has some lettering inside and the clue in the jewel box. So this one is blue, but has the dark navy but still Nancy is right there in the middle. So those three I listed together. Next we have Rose in Bloom. This is a Whitman edition of this book. So the dust jacket you can see is torn, but inside it looks good. So this is a Louisa May Alcott. I have one more book coming up in this haul that is the same series and looks just like that. Next, we have this Antique Aesop's Fables. You'll probably be hearing my dog come in and out of the back door. So this is very delicate. The town mouse and the country mouse. I don't know if I did some research on this and found out what the date was for it. Um, I can't remember right off the top of my head, but it is a beautiful book. It's got some full page color illustrations. Next, we have a nice antique edition. I think it's antique. Hans Brinker or the Silver Skates. So this one has some wear along the edges here. Spine wear. Every time I list this book, no matter what form it is in, it sells pretty quickly. This is from 1925. This book is super cute. It's called Dulcie Sews a Sampler. And this sweet little girl just does some very wholesome activities throughout the day. This is a first edition from 1945. So we have a couple of chapters, the May Basket or Surprise for Granny Cooper, the Sampler or the Mystery of the Letter Q, the Wedding and Why Dulcie Was Late, and the Major's Party where Dulcie fooled everybody, including herself. Oh, it's so cute. Never seen that book before. And then 
There were quite a few Wizard of Oz books in this haul. This one is The Lost Princess of Oz. See here, it is from 1917. Very pretty. Isn't that nice? We will probably see another one of those Oz books in this haul. These are three golden books that I'm selling together. None of them have barcodes, so they are all pre barcode. We have Lassie and Her Day in the Sun. The Walt, uh, Walt Disney Presents The Jungle Book, and Corky. Okay, next we have this set of two books by Noel Streetfield. He wrote a series of books uh, called the Shoes series. So this is Skating Shoes. And this is Ballet Shoes, a delightful story about three little girls who studied for careers on the stage. Look at that spine. Aren't those sweet? They're very um, rare, not very common to find these. Um, so I decided to list them together since they are in the same series. Make a little bit of room here. Next, we have this very strange book a Book of Rigmaroles or Jingle Rhymes by Enid Marks. This was printed in Great Britain and it is very rare. And it is from 1945 and it is a puffin picture book. I cannot show you the first page because the first song is very offensive. Um, so I'm not gonna show it to you. You can see that the staples have rusted so the pages are loose. This is the house that Jack built. Titty Mouse and Tatty Mouse. This book um, is highly collectible. Um, so hopefully it will find a new home. The Book of Rigmaroles by Enid Marks. Next we have three Winnie the Pooh books. So we have Winnie the Pooh, When We Were Very Young, and now we are six. So these are all vintage from the 1940s or 50s, I believe. Let's just take a look at this first one, 1950. Yeah, I think there's two from 1950 and maybe one from 1949. In pretty good condition. Then I have this edition of Heidi, which I really like because of the purple. This is a companion library. Companion Library is more famous for their double books that have one book this way and then you flip it and there's another book in the other way, but this is just a single book. This is another true first edition Nancy Drew and I researched this a little bit and you can tell it's a first edition because of the list of Nancy Drew mysteries here on this flap. And then the list of the Dana Girls mystery stories here, the fact that there's 13 here. And then also this back advertisement for Connie Blair mystery stories is also an indication that this is a first edition Nancy Drew. This is the mystery at the ski jump and it is number 29. This is another book in the young girl mystery novel genre that was very popular in the mid-century years. This is a Vicki Barr Flight Stewardess series, The Mystery at Hartwood House. And Julie Tatham wrote this book and she also co-authored the Cherry Ames Nurse Stories. So there is Miss Vicki Barr, the Flight Stewardess. So fun to find all these different variations of the mystery novels. Okay, this is uh, The Jungle Books. So this is a two volume set by Doubleday. And they're really, really pretty inside. Look at that pretty green color and that lovely spine with the gold accents. So this is a two book set. There's the first color illustrations. There's some more.
These are from 1948 and 1949. Two volume set. Now we have Two's Company. This is another young adult novel. It's got this rib here. But it, by Betty Kavanaugh. There's the inside. It's pretty fun font there. So this is about a young girl um, who I believe is in college and goes to visit her grandparents in Williamsburg. And her beau also happens to be in Williamsburg, um, preparing for, I think, a play that he is in. Yep. And then we have this nice Illustrated Junior Library Edition of Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson. Beautiful color illustrations in here. This is from 1948. We're gonna move on to another pile now. So let me slide it a little bit closer. We're gonna start with The Giant Moose. This is by Elliot Whitney, and it is part of the Boys Big Game series. So this is a book about hunting, and it's in a series of books about hunting for boys. So it's got pencil inscription here in this one loose page. I'm not sure where it goes in the book, um, but this is the Big Game, the Boys Big Game series. Started with the giant moose, then the white tiger of Nepal, the blind lion of the Congo, the king bear of Kodiak Island, and the rogue elephant. 1912. Next, we have a landmark book, Christopher Columbus. This is the number one, the first in the series landmark book. The Voyages of Christopher Columbus with a dust jacket, in really good condition. Look at how nice and clean that is. It does have this library stamp in it from its former owner. But the inside is in very good condition. This is from 1950 and it's the second printing. There is this pen inscription there. I don't know what that's about. Otherwise, this is clean as a whistle. This is Pollyanna by Eleanor H. Porter. This one is pretty worn. I'm gonna give it a little while to sell individually, and if not, that's going to look really pretty in a book set. So, the otherwise known as the Glad Book, and here's the whole series of Pollyanna books that eventually came out. So this edition is from 1940. Looks like this was originally printed in the 1910s. But this edition is from 1940. Next we have this uh, two volume young adult series by Laura Cooper Rendina. This is Roommates and Debbie Jones. So Debbie Jones is the, the heroine of both of these stories. This is her first year at Pine Ridge School. And that I guess is her roommate on the cover. And this is the book Got some pen inscription there about her second year at Pine Ridge School. So those are being sold as a set. We have Black, the Black Stallion and Satan, who is another horse, don't worry. Um, very nice, black, gold, and red. It's got a book stamp in it, and it is in pretty darn good condition. This is from 1949, and it is a first printing. Here is another edition of Heidi. This is the other Whitman book I was telling you about. See, it looks just the same as Rose and Bloom. But this one is Heidi with a nice dust jacket. And then we have this tiny little book called Fluffy and the Flyaway Fly. This is a Whitman big telltale. So usually Whitman telltale books are smaller, pocket-sized, like this one. But this is a big telltale. And it's a cute story set in the, in the farm, farm 
farmyard with the chickens mostly. So an early reader book. And this is a baby's first mother goose, a plat and monk deluxe cloth book, 12 pages of fine cloth in full color. Wait till you see these illustrations. Look at how bright and cheerful those are. And these are cloth, but like a high quality, um, durable cloth. So this book is meant for very young hands. The staples are rusting through a little bit. This is from 1960. Looks like it was never even opened. Here is another Oz book. Now the dust jacket is here, but it's in three different pieces. Here's the inside. The ma Magical Mimics in Oz. So this is a continuation of the Wizard of Oz series by Jack Snow. So it was founded on and continuing the famous Oz stories built by L. Frank Baum. So I guess once L. Frank Baum died, Jack Snow was given the authority to continue the series. So this book is from 1946. I really love those covers. They're just so colorful. Wait till you see this one. This is so fun. Walt Disney's surprise package. This one has got some heavy damage here. We're going to open it up. This is my favorite part. This is so beautiful. I want this as a wallpaper in my house. I took a picture of it just so I would have this pattern on my phone in my photos because it's so beautiful. So this is from 1944. It includes a whole bunch of fun stories from Br'er Rabbit. There's a Hans Christian Andersen story or two. Chicken Little Lady from Lady and the Tramp, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, The Wind in the Willows, Peter Pan, Peter and the Wolf, The Square World, and Happy Valley from an English folktale. There's Br'er Rabbit. Look at that. That is through the picture frame. Happy Valley, Peter and the Wolf. Your pan and the pirates, the wind in the willows, Alice, Lady, Little Fir Tree, and then the back you have the same pattern again. But this is where you can really see the damage in the book because it is splitting all up the spine. Isn't that wonderful? Such a delight. And that pattern, I swear, I love it so much. Okay, here's another weird one. Peter Rabbit, the magician. I don't know whose idea this was. Um, but it looks like Lynn wrote her name there. So you open this book up. It's copyright 1942. And each page has a magic trick for the child to do. But unfortunately, the little things that were tucked in here to do the tricks with are mostly gone. Mr. McGregor's magic pocket book. Mr. Mrs. Rabbit's mystery knife. Now here's the here's the only page where I found some of the props. Flopsy Mopsy Phantom cards. So inside here there are two cards. So I think you can still do this particular trick. Peter's magic mailbox. Doesn't appear to be anything inside there anymore. And then this one is missing the things too. And this is how you do the tricks. So these are all the instruction cards for all the previous pages. Why that has anything to do with Peter Rabbit, I don't really know. Here's another beautiful classic Animal Stories by Georges Duplay and Pictures by Rojankovsky. This book is gorgeous. 1944. This is a first printing. I've bought and sold this book a couple of times. This is probably the best copy I've had because the pages are so clean. 
and the illustrations are still nice and bright. But it is missing its spine. The whole thing is gone there. So beautiful. We are gonna work on our last pile. Let me pull it over here. Here it is. We have two more Winnie the Pooh books that I'm setting, selling as a set. Winnie the Pooh and the House at Pooh Corner. Both with the dust jackets, which is why I'm selling these two together. Isn't that nice? Fun, fun, fun. This is a delight. I know this will get snagged really fast. Betty Cornell's Teenage Popularity Guide. Here are, here you are, everything I learned as a teenage model about good looks, grooming, and personality. All my secrets of boys and glamour in one big book to help you become the most popular girl in your set. That's baby blue inside. So we get some advice on good grooming, clothing, hair, skin problems. Behavior away from home. Oh, look at this. Anita Colby's 14-day eat plenty reducing diet. I didn't even know this was in here. Oh, dear. Ah, how to be a hostess. Teenage exercises. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep. Looking good, honey. Teenage calorie guide. This is just gruesome. I'm glad we've moved past this. And personality. Of course, don't forget that. Well, it's still fun to flip through. Here's another interesting book. Mother Goose Magic Window by Hank Hart. This one has some damage. You'll see when we open it up. That the pages, that, that bind, what is this called? The spiral bound is not really holding it in all that well. This is from 1943. A diller, a dollar, a 10 o'clock scholar. What makes you come so soon? You used to come at 10 o'clock and now you come at noon. So each page has one of these moving windows. So little Bo Peep turns into the sheep. Little Boy Blue. And then some more rhymes at the back. Old Mother Hubbard. There's her doggy. Isn't that fun? And all the windows work. It's just the pages that are having trouble staying together because of that. This book is really pretty. Three prayers. This needs to be dusted a little bit more. It's got some damage here. You can see it's been worn away. Still a little dusty. I'll give it another dusting. This has got this crayon mark here. Three prayers for children. Now I lay me down the Lord's Prayer and Heavenly Father. And I'll tell you what's so pretty about this book is the, the metallic gold accents. This is from 1941. So you have the picture on one side and then the prayer on the other side. And the beginning letter is in just this beautiful metallic gold. Simple, beautiful. So sweet. There's the back. Uh, get ready for an amazing book. This might be the best one in this whole set. This is American Butterflies and Moths. This is a random house book. And the inside looks just like the dust jacket. Look at that. It gets better. Look. 1942. So, familiar butterflies and moths and their habits, where to hunt specimens, and look at this. Look, it's so beautiful. It hurts to look at it so pretty. And it does not have any damaged pages. Look, at it. it's just stunning. What a beautiful nature study book. 
just lovely. Ah, lace eye. Let's see what else we have. Here's another prayer book. Dale Evans Prayer Book for Children, a big golden book. So this is Western themed and it's um, got an inscription from 1961. This front page is taped and the back page is also taped. And in between you have all these darling Western themed mostly illustrations cacti, desert flowers. Isn't this fun? This is from 1956. Okay, we're getting close to being done. This is a fireside book of folk songs. Another beautiful book. Look at that. It's so pretty. The spine. This book is in very good condition. The dust jacket protected it really well. This is a fourth printing from 1947, John Peel, Down in the Valley, Barbara Allen, Lowlands, I've Been Walking on the Railroad. Isn't that nice? Next we have this book. I don't know if this is for children or not. I don't, I actually, I, I don't really know. Anyway, it's a random house book, so I guess it is kind of like the Butterflies and Moths book. Fighting Planes of the World by Major Bernard A. Law. So we've got some damage here. And it shows all of these uh, cool air, fighting airplanes from all around the world in this wonderful mid-century modern aviation illustration style. It's just fantastic. Isn't that cool? Love it. Next we have this soft cover to Storyland. I thought it was really cute with the kitty cat on the front and the back. This is just a simple black and white uh, storybook collection. Looks like you would expect a coloring book to be inside here because that is the, the style and even the paper style is usually what you would see in a coloring book, but it isn't storybook. Here is a picture dictionary for children. I believe this is from 1939. It's got some writing on the front, some coloring inside. It's colored, colored. And especially the first, I don't know, 10 or 20 pages, somebody did a lot of coloring. Now we're in page 31, 32. And after that, it slows down to just occasional coloring. And there was another page I found back here that had a large rip in it. So it's in here somewhere. But otherwise, this is almost 500 pages of um, words for children illustrated in cursive and in block lettering print. Okay, this one is The Little Spanish Dancer. This is a book about flamenco dancing in Spain. It is from 1936. So they used photographs to illustrate this story, but the story is fiction. So they just had someone um, play Pilar, who is the main character in this book. This book is really fun. Sally Goes Shopping Alone. This is about eight-year-old Sally. Happy birthday to our darling Lynn from Uncle Dave and Aunt Bug. This is a story about eight-year-old Sally who is allowed to go shopping by herself for the first time because her mother is busy. I have bought and sold this book once before and it's super fun. I wish eight-year-olds could still go shopping by themselves these days, but they can't. Here is a vintage stories from Uncle Remus. My dad's favorite children's book is Uncle Remus. So this is Joel Chandler Harris. This edition is from 1934 and it is in pretty good condition. It's got beautiful uh, artwork. I think I will try to read this book to Jack before it sells. 
because I don't think we've read any Uncle Remus yet. And then we have this beautiful book. It's called Thimble Summer. Look at that. There's a thimble. It's, it's got an inscription from 1941. And look at that illustration style. It's really unique and very, very pretty. 1938. Look at that. Just really special, unique. That is what I like about this book. The, illustra the, the illustration style is just very, very unique. Really pretty. Just three more books to go, friends. This is another one of those young adult um, junior books and Emery Going Steady. So this one is about Sally, who looks forward to a carefree, happy summer with nothing to do but be with Scotty. Hey, Scotty. And this book is called Secret of the Garden, and you can tell it is from Great Britain because of the pricing sticker. Secret of the Garden and Other Tales by Gwen Boucher. This one also has really pretty full page color illustrations. See that? This is Georgie Porgy putting in pie. The squire's son had won his nickname from the other children because he was so fat and greedy and bullied them. Pussycat goes to town. The midnight feast. Cockadoodle do. All kinds of things in there. Definitely got some spotting all over from how it was stored, but the inside is still pretty clean. And this, um, this, I listed this one, even though I tried to set aside all the Christmas ones, I was gonna do all the Christmas ones separate, but this one got listed. I have two copies of this book now. One is this one, which is truly vintage, 1950, and the other one is a modern reprint. So this is The Animals, Merry Christmas, 30 New Stories, A Giant Golden Book, and this is illustrated by Richard Scarry. So this one is from 1950, and you can see some fading as the Christmas tree goes up. And look at this, look at that pop up. Isn't that funny? I love it so much. Um, and also I love that this book is just in such good condition. The Cold Little Squirrel. Terrible Teddy Bear. Tippet's Christmas Trouble. Secret Ride. Mr. Lion's Plum Pudding. The Naughty Little Reindeer. The Cricket's Carol. The Best Christmas Present. Isn't this beautiful? So now you can choose between this vintage copy or a newer copy. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed looking through all these amazing children's books. And don't forget, if you want to get any of them, you can find the link down in the description. I'll see you next time.